Hey everyone, welcome to your Annie List, the place where we talk all about only the best anime that are worth watching. Today we are going to go through the film Nepokeriku Bushiroad. And if you would like to see all about anime, please leave your like and subscribe to join our Annie List. They underestimated him, but he shocks everyone with his true power. Hey guys, and today's anime remake board, my only wish is that you leave like and share this video if you like this video. While this story takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, after being devastated by poisonous beings which came to this world through a meteor, the world is abysmal with despair. Even though all seems lost, the hope of defeating these aliens still exists. The person who carries with her the willpower to do this is a princess who saw her mother deleted by these aliens. She was traveling with a group of people and out of nowhere, she feels the presence of an alien. Remembering that the aliens in this anime are called Shinobi, a horrible name by the way. When looking to where the alien was, the princess sees a group of people trying to offer a girl to the aliens. They try to get them to back off because the aliens are already close. Out of nowhere, the aliens arrive, so the princess and her driver gets inside robots and go off to fight. They defeat the first one, the second one, and then free the girl who was being held captive. When going after the remaining enemies, the princess ends up seeing humans fighting several aliens alone, and she tries to help the boy, she almost ends up being defeated. But the white-haired boy stands up and defeats the enemies. The last alien advances on the humans of the village, but the protagonist of this story defeats him. After he does this, his dark transformation is gone, and the princess decides to take care of him. Inside the princess's vehicle, all of her partners notice that the boy is cute and somehow is not affected by the alien's poison. When the protagonist wakes up, he faints from hunger. Then the girls give him rice to eat and he eats like a starving animal. After eating, he goes outside and comes across the elderly man installing some stops that repel the aliens. The elderly man recommends that the protagonist thank the princess for helping him. He finds the girl and thanks her. In a conversation, the protagonist says his name is Sue. As the princess has seen the guy in action, she asks him to help her eradicate the aliens from this world, for he has the power to do so. Bud says he's not as strong as he thinks and that everyone considers him a monster, and then he puts his foot in it. Back in the car, the old man says that he has fought alongside people with power similar to that of the protagonist, but people with this power no longer exist because of people's prejudice. The next day, Sue appears and agrees to help the princess to eradicate the aliens. The girl runs towards him all happy and says that he's not a monster because his eyes are beautiful. The protagonist is embarrassed and calls her a strange woman. After this, they start the vehicle and drive away. So that the protagonist doesn't have to walk around with these pierced cloths, the elderly Supremo gives him a brand new outfit. So they travel to a place where a meteor fell and destroyed everything. Their goal in going to this place is to get a legendary weapon called the Gigarod. The ancient legends of the humans say that this weapon is able to eradicate the aliens and purify the planet. The princess has a stone that can activate this sacred weapon. Upon hearing the story, Sue says he knows the way to reach this place. Confident, the princess believes his words and the protagonist shows them the way. Getting close to the place, they had to abandon the car and keep walking in the middle of a storm. While the princess and the elderly were inside machines, Sue was walking calmly in the middle of a storm. Suddenly, the princess and the elderly become ill and faint, after which some men in the armor appear and arrest them. The princess wakes up safe and sound inside her room. Out of nowhere, a guy appears and says that they saved them from poison from that place. Then he takes the girl to an underground garden. His objective in taking her there was so that the great local emperor could have a chat with the princes of the Ice Empire. Unfortunately for the girl, the man in front of her confiscates the key to the sacred weapon. She asks the man to return the stone, but the man confronts the girl and tells her to give up the silly dream. In the middle of the conversation, the Grand Emperor says that the sacred weapon is too dangerous to activate. In the end, the man says that in Turai, people can defend themselves and don't need to be saved. Sad Princess feels a weakness. When the Emperor reaches out his hand to help her, Sue appears and holds the man. After this encounter, the Great Emperor leaves taking the key to sacred weapon with him. Together, the two meet up with their companions. There, the princess shows willingness to give up her goal, for she no longer has the stone and has lost hope after hearing the local emperor's speech. She decides to be sad alone, and the elder of the group decides to have a sword fight against Sue. After teaching the protagonist something important, the old man tells the kid to go after the princess. Meanwhile, in a faraway place, the man who's supposed to be the great emperor bows to an old man 
and is ordered to capture the princes so that they can use the sacred weapon for the good of their empire. The protagonist finds the princess under the rain and takes her to a covered place. Before obeying the old man's orders, the local emperor orders his subordinate to take the princess out of Turai. When talking to the protagonist, the princess cries and calls herself useless. Sue hugs her and says he only wishes to stay by her side and sees her smile. Out of nowhere, the rain stops and people start moving around again. Then the protagonist picks up the princess on his lap and takes her for a walk. He speeds up, picks her up on his lap, does a lot of dangerous stunts, and in the end, the princess rides on top of him. After this, the princess regains her confidence to get the sacred weapon, but some soldiers show up wanting to arrest her. Sue immobilizes one of the enemies and threatens. In the end, they are saved by the subordinate of the guy who is supposed to be the emperor. After escaping, they find the handsome ruler. In a conversation, the girl tries to get the key to the sacred weapon back. After a great speech from the girl, the man stretches out his necklace and tells them to kill him to get the key from him. Sue takes the front line and the battle begins. When he realizes that the protagonist is a special being from an endangered race, the man becomes animated and the battle begins to flow very lively. When Sue was about to lose, he activates his special power and hits the enemy. The Emperor prepares the fight to the death, but they end up being interrupted by an attack from the Ice Empire's flying castle. The princess doesn't understand how this is happening because the only ones who should know how to move the castle died in the alien's attack. Out of nowhere, a man named Tsukiyomi tells the people of Turai that resisting is useless. Hearing the man's voice, the princess remembers him. She swears that this man died during the invasion of the castle. The moment she thinks about it, the man appears in front of her using a dark power and says that he merged with the aliens. After arresting everyone, Tsukiyomi says that his current goal is to eliminate humanity. But before that, he wants the sacred weapon for himself. The man with the white hair starts squeezing the princess to give him the key to the sacred weapon. Seeing this, Sue gets angry and an obscure armor covers his body, making him much stronger. With his strength, he pressures his enemy, and in order not to be defeated, Tsukiyomi uses an item to escape. A long time after this, Sue wakes up in a Turai infirmary. Looking at his hand, the protagonist remembers that the princess contained his moment of rage, and after that he fainted. Even though some time has passed, his hands are still transformed. While he was getting up, the Emperor of Turai made the decision to confront Ice Castle, using his castle and the whole army. Everyone is afraid, but the man gives such a good speech to his soldiers that even I felt like going to war with him. Outside the city of Turai, the princess and her elderly companion try to go to that city again. At least this time, they'll not suffer from the local poison, for they have received antidotes from the emperor. In some flashbacks of the past, a conversation between the princess and the big man shows that she left Sue behind and went after the sacred weapon without him. Before she leaves, the man in front of her says he will no longer stop her and leaves. When the flashbacks end, the princess was finally close to the promised city. Inside the promised land, she's happy, but her happiness is short-lived as aliens appear. Upon seeing several gigantic enemies, they begin to retreat. When one of the enemies is about to hit the princess, the old man steps in front. At this moment, the princess shouts his name, and it was only at this moment that I discovered that the old man is called Sanda. Even receiving a heavy blow, Sanda stands his ground and tells the princess to move on while he deals with the enemies. He starts fighting on his own, and when the princess gets away from him, Sanda pushes the famous auto blast button. Further on, the princess is advancing, and out of nowhere, a bright light hits her. Meanwhile, in Torai, the commander orders their ship or flying castle to head towards the enemy. Back at the princess, the whole place was destroyed by the light, but she was very well thanks to a shield. As she looks ahead, she finds the famous sacred weapon that everyone wishes to obtain. Happy, she orders the sacred weapon to wake up. As she says this, a top-of-the-line gamer chair appears, just as the girl was about to master the sacred weapon. That guy named Tsukiyomi appears again. With the enemy approaching, the girl struggles to try to activate the sacred weapon. Out of nowhere, the weapon finally gives a signal that'll turn on. The girl is happy and a stake pierces her neck. At this moment, something begins to spread through her body. But what happened to the princess didn't kill her, but connected her with a sacred weapon. She stands up, saying that she will not forgive Tsukiyomi, and the stick starts to break. With the power of the sacred weapon, the girl tries to bazookata him, but he manages to send the power away. From the looks of it, there's still something missing for a sacred weapon made by humans to fully use its potential. As Tsukiyomi mocks his enemy, Tirai's flying castle arrives on the battlefield. The princess tries to send Tsukiyomi a moral lesson, but he tells her to shut up and attacks her. 
Turai's army prepares an explosive ship and sends it towards the enemy. To meet the princess, Sue boards the ship. Fortunately, the emperor senses his presence and warns that the ship will explode on the enemy. In front of the princess, Tsukuyomi brags about his control over the aliens. According to him, his research allowed him to become an immortal god. The man also says that the aliens cannot reproduce. For them to do so, they need this giant trembling uterus. According to Tsukuyomi, this giant uterus had been sealed by ancient civilizations. But when she activated the sacred weapon, the seal was broken and now the number of aliens will increase in this world. His words are interrupted by the ship arriving and exploding. Then Sue runs towards the princess. Upon contacting the princess, the protagonist receives the news that old man Sanda has died. Princess Aim begins to cry, thinking that everything bad that has happened is her fault. And Sue begins to approach her, talking about everything she represents to him. As he approached the girl, the sacred weapon defense system attacks him to defend the user. Even receiving the blows, Sue says that his greatest wish is to always be by her side. In the end, he falls all wounded in the girl's lap. The machine hits him with a red needle, and then the two are taken to the interior of the sacred weapon. With their union, the sacred weapon reaches its true form. In fact, it is even stronger than it normally was. Together, the two begin to attack the Tsukuyomi. Inside the sacred weapon, the two wounded lovers unite completely and come to the obvious conclusion that they must aim at the enemy's core. Tsukuyomi begins to despair. In the middle of the battle, they find the core of all evil and move in to destroy it. With that, they hit the core and manage to destroy it. The sacred weapon runs out of energy and falls like a meteor to the ground. Sue comes out of it alive, but unfortunately, his romantic partner is deceased. In my opinion, either two people die or two people stay alive. To leave only one alive is something of a Japanese author who tries to make people leave the theater crying. And that's it. I really hope you enjoy the video. If you have any suggestions for videos, don't forget to comment here below because I'll be reading all of them as I always do. Also, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any content from your analyst.